Greetings! Just here in camp, inside the little tarp house on my tarp floors, gonna do a little bit of bucket laundry. You wonder how I do laundry out here on the road without access to anything at all? Well, I use the, the old bucket laundry method. You've probably seen this online, lots of people do it. You basically get yourself a brand new plunger, and you drill a bunch of holes all through it so that water and air can come through as you plunge down into the bucket. I've got some warm water in my bucket here, and I have a piece of laundry that I need to do by itself. This shirt I was wearing during a trail run the other day on the Rogue River Trail, and I came around a corner, and a skunk was three feet from me, literally within an arm's reach, and it totally tagged me. Not bad, but this shirt just won't stop stinking, and it just reeks like skunk. So I don't want to wash it with anything else in case it imparts that skunk smell onto other things. I'm a little worried it might make my bucket a little stinky, but we're going to give it a try. So basically you need warm water. You can see, got warm water in there. Yeah, a little duct tape to seal a crack. It's an old bucket. What are you going to do? But again, brand new plunger. Never was used on a toilet, so it's nice and clean. It's only ever been used for bucket laundry. So we're just going to drop it in there. And we need some soap. What do I do? I just use a little bar of glycerin soap that I just drop right in. And it's really simple. Just plunge. Plunge away. And if you and you can do, I don't know, a pair of jeans and a shirt or a load of like maybe a week's worth of socks and underwear or two or three shirts in a bucket. You know, of course, it depends on the size of the bucket, but um, it also kind of depends on your willingness to sit here and plunge away. Now, if you don't have enough holes, as you can see, the bucket kind of those there's suction. And so having big holes, some people put really, really big holes in their plunger. That does help. So I'm going to give it a try here and just kind of plunge away with it with uh, a lot more water in here you can really aggressively just chunk, 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 and really plunge away now you can look up online and find pictures of old school washing machines that used metal plungers like a hundred years ago i remember seeing one that was sort of like a wash tub like kind of like a long oval wash tub with a an arm with a plunger on either end and it would you know do Two plungers, chunk, 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 chunk. It was like, wow, metal plunger, 100 years ago. So this isn't something new. This isn't some innovation. This is just the same old way people have been doing laundry for a long, long time, by hand. And once you think you got enough soap in there, you want to go ahead and get the soap out, save it, and keep a plunging. And once you got it ready to rinse, you're going to want to throw away the rinse water someplace where you're not going to bother the environment and that's why I use plain glycerin soap because it's pretty well as natural as it's going to be there's no additives there's no chemicals there's no you know antibacterial stuff in it it's just glycerin so that's some pretty dirty water wow and so for the rinse all you're going to want to do is wring out the dirty water make sure it's in here so you don't splash it everywhere I'm trying not to make a mess all over my living area. I still smell skunk. Darn. Rinse out that dirty water. And squeeze it out. Now twisting like this is not the best thing for your clothing. Uh, it's better to tumble dry really in clothing. Modern clothing is meant to be tumble dried, not twisted. This is really hard on your clothes. It stresses the seams. It stretches out the fabric. But uh, yeah, I'll get it as much as we can. And then I gotta throw away the written wastewater here and go get some rinse water so that's kind of the next step here go ahead and get on to the rinsing cycle all right went over and got some water from the camp tap nice clean water and now we're going to go ahead and just drop it right in and it's the same exact thing for rinsing you're just going to plunge away and again we're pushing clean water through it i can still smell scum darn it i was hoping this would help I still smell skunk. At least the shirt's clean. <laughs> it may reek like a skunk. Man, my it got everything I had on, had with me. I was wearing a baseball cap. I had a pair of sunglasses in my shirt pocket, in the pocket of this shirt. I had my phone in my hand. I was wearing my running shorts and a, my newer pair of uh, sandals from Riverside and or uh, Northside. And <laughs> boy, every single thing smelled like skunk. The phone still has a vague skunk smell. It's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a persistent, persistent stuff. And he, he only tagged me just a little bit. Like, it was just a tiny little hit. But, man, it is persistent stuff. And I'm totally familiar with skunk smell. I've lived in places where skunks were always spraying outside and the whole house would reek. And it, you get used to it, you know. It's not really that bad. But 
That's pretty darn good, I think. That's a pretty decent rinse. The water is dirty, of course, and that's kind of what you would hope for. It means the dirt came out of the shirt. And again, just gonna wring it out to dry it, or to, to rinse it and get it wrung out, sorry. And back in the day, I used to actually do all my laundry this way. Every single thing that I owned, I, was, I would wash this way. But I had a wringer, and that made it so much easier to not have to sit here and twist your clothes and just run it through the wringer. Not that it wasn't work, though. That wringer was work. You had to hand crank it. But uh, I don't have any place for it to come with me on the road, so... Got to do it the old twist way. And that's basically it. We hang, hang it out to dry. Whoops, <laughs> whoopsie, <laughs> put the sleeve back in there. But just hang it up to dry or lay it out in the sun on you know, the hood of the truck, as long as it's clean, or the picnic table or something. But uh, the sun is out, so I'm gonna go ahead and hang her up and give her a chance to dry. And hopefully this doesn't smell too bad like skunk anymore. Let's see, uh, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. It mainly got me on my right side along this side of the shirt here, but um, so that's basically it. And then of course you just dump the rinse water again where it's not going to bother anything. And uh, there you go, a mostly clean shirt, <laughs> other than a little bit of skunk spray that seems to be persistent in it. But uh, you can do any number of loads you want, and you can you, you can warm up water on the stove to have hot water. So you have a, a you know you wash warm, rinse cold. That's what I did here. I did a few potfuls of water on the stove to get warm water. But uh, there you go, bucket laundry. It's super simple. All you need is a bucket, a plunger, and a way to make holes in the plunger, and away you go. Of course, water and soap and some dirty clothes. Gotta have some dirty clothes to wash. To wash. But I uh, definitely want to thank you for joining me for a few minutes in camp here while I demonstrate how I do laundry out here on the road with the good old plunger and a bucket. Bucket laundry.